Sabbath, everyone. Uh, welcome to our afternoon AY program. Uh, this is the English and White household here uh, that we will be starting off today's program with a little bit of old fashioned song service. So we'll start with a word of prayer to get the program started. Father God, we're grateful for your Sabbath day, this respite that we have from the cares of the world. We ask that as we continue and worship together, that your spirit will continue to abide with us. We pray that the words that we sing, the words that we say, will be music to your ears. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so uh, we have a little chorus and a hymn. I hope you will join us. Uh, the first song we're going to sing together is um, In My Heart There Rings a Melody. In My Heart There Rings a Melody. I thought it was a nice, youthful song, but my kids have absolutely no idea what song that is. So we're going to show them, show and my nephew and my cousin here. So we're going to teach them a little something here, but hopefully everyone will, will enjoy it. All right. I have a song that Jesus gave me. It was sent from heaven above. There never was a sweeter melody. It's the melody of love. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody with heaven's harmony. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody of love. I love the Christ who died on Calvary, for he washed my sins away. He put within my heart a melody, and I know it's there to stay. In my heart there is a melody, there is a melody, there is a melody. In my heart there is a melody, 
Actually, a hymn, uh, number three, three, eight, and a hymn, hymnal. Um, it's called Redeemed. We're going to sing that newer version uh, from like 1826. The newer version <laughs> is uh, from like eight, the late 19th century. Um, Redeemed, number three, three, eight. Three, three, eight. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. We all, we thank God we serve a God of second chances, right? We can claim it to his blood of redemption. That's a that's a that's a no. We have that old school Advent youth. Y'all know about that. How many of you know about that? That's a classic right there. This is worth at least three, four thousand dollars. I'm sure. Everyone has it. Number three, three, eight. Redeem. Number three, three, eight. All right. We should we should get started. We sing how I love to proclaim and we sing by the blood of the Lamb. We sing through His infinite mercy, His child and forever I am. Oh, we sing, we sing. We sing by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it is shining forever. I think of my blessed Redeemer, I think of him all the day long. I sing for I cannot be silent, his love is the theme of my song. Oh, redeemed. I know I shall stand in this beauty, the King, King whose law I divide, who loving with my footsteps and giveth me songs in the night. Oh, I will pass the mic over to Lenny, Dr. McCullough, to continue with this afternoon's program. Thank you. Ah, I'm running back and forth a little bit, but it's, it's all worth it. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Um, so right now, um, but just let me say this before I even get to that. You know, I, I, I realize now where the power lies in the English family, because I asked Shirley to, to, to just get somebody to do two songs for me, and she got a whole choir. Mm -hmm. And so I know where the, that, that's powerful. <laughs> so now I know, I always thought it was somewhere else. I, wouldn't, I don't wanna say who I thought it was with, but I always thought it was somewhere else, but I was wrong. So wonderful, wonderful. Well, right now, we're going to have a uh, prayer by Dr. Jude Pierre. Um, 
Unmute yourself, please, and give us a Uh, hi everyone, please bow your heads and close your eyes for a word of prayer. Um, dear Heavenly Father, just want to thank you so much for your many blessings, um, for the love that you've shown us for this Sabbath day, Lord. We just ask that you, at this moment, come and abide with us as we uh, dive into this AY service, Lord. Uh, we ask that you be with both the speakers, uh, allow them to speak a word that really touches and resonates with all of our members, Lord, that allow us to allow the message to change our perceptions on um, what we view beautiful hair to be and, and hair care. And just allow us to be able to um, really take care of our hair and show these crowns that you have blessed us with uh, until you put a crown of gold on our heads when we see you in glory, Lord. We thank you and praise you for all that you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. And now we're going to have our um, scripture reading from Mr. Richard Trofer, a friend of mine. His wife is going to be presenting, and he agreed to do the scripture for us today. He's one of the elders at Florida City Seventh-day Adventist Church. Welcome, Richard. Thank you. Good evening. Our scripture reading this afternoon comes from the book of Luke, Luke chapter 12, verses 7, and it says, but even the very hair of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, all are, all are, ye are all more valuable than sparrow. May the Lord add a blessing upon the reading, the hearing, and, and the doers of his word. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, now we're going to quickly switch gears and go into the theme of our part of the program. I had the topic as here today, gone tomorrow. A lot of people are going bald, a lot of our own people for various reasons, um, some that are avoidable. So I have with me today uh, a hair stylist. Um, I get their different names they use for people in that profession. Um, but um, she's going to give us a little bit more information and then um, tell us some more details. Lois, are you there? I am. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Can you so hear me? Let me introduce you, Lois. Lois, this is Lois Trofford. She's licensed to, I guess, I don't know if you, what do you, what do you, what's the best term to use? Cosmic? Uh, yeah. His, his, his specialist. Her specialist? Yes. Okay. And um, she has been doing that for a number of years. Um, she has given me some information that I think that and she'll present to us, that's gonna change some of the ways we do here, or, or some of our ladies, some of even some of our men. So um, at this time, we're, it's uh, the end of the month, but we're dealing with a lot of elderly people. Uh, this is seniors month, and some of them have lost their hair, both men and women. And she will give us ideas of way to retain as much hair as possible. And we also have, um, in our community, we have a lot of hangups about here. When I say our community, black community, Af or those of us of African descent. So we're gonna talk about that, how we fit into society with our different here and different looks. And my wife will be presenting some of that later, uh, Dr. Judy McCalla. So let's start out with Lois. Uh, can I just ask you a few questions before we get going though? Um, how long have you been doing this profession? Oh, Just young people get an idea of what what to expect. Yeah. Oh, over twenty years. Yes. You know, over twenty years. So, what type of training do you have? What did you have to do to 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 get licensed to do this? Uh, well, it takes a two year um, degree. Um, if you want to do um, more than here, you can also add a business um, degree to it. Also. Okay, so I think you're happy with your career choice based on the way I see you light up when we talk about here. So um, is that correct? Oh, definitely. It is my passion. So it's okay. just more, it's more than a job. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, why did you choose it? 
Um, actually, it chose me. <laughs> it was not my first, my first choice as a career. Um, but when I came to school, um, I signed up late and what I wanted to get into was not available. So my sister recommended me go to vocational school until, you know, it opens up. Um, I found out I love it. My um, teachers found that I was um, pretty good at it and she encouraged me to do it. And here I am today. Okay. Now, would you recommend it then to young people as, as something to do? Actually, it's um, a very lucrative lucrative career and I recommend it because you can take, um, as a cosmetologist, you, you can go to so many avenues, whether you want to do just hair, you want to do body or your nails. Um, it, it is something that you can really um, be good at. Now, um, what about getting off on Sabbaths as being a Seventh-day Adventist? Has that ever been a problem for you? Actually, um, as many of you may not know, I was never born into um, this um, uh, denomination. Um, so I studied here before I was even Adventist. And so when the, um, this came up, I, it was a little challenging, but I had to remember if I give everything to God, he everything out for my good. And actually, um, I find out that this was what God chose for me. So and I actually went into it challenging him and say, no, Saturdays is where, you know, I was told we make more money. And God said, oh, I have the last laugh. And here I am today. I have taken off every Sabbath and God has truly blessed me. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank God, thank God. Now, um, let me ask you, the, the type of patients that you, or patients or clients that you see, um, is it a mixture of different races or do you do pretty much one race of people or only African-Americans or whatever? Do you do all types of people? Cut all kinds um, of people? Actually, my client base is, yes, um, from every diversity you can think of, um, from every walk of life, from every culture. Um, so I have from white to black to red to yellow. So yes, I um, am. I am an international hairstylist. Okay. Do you? So that means that there's different types of hair, then, right? Uh, 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 hair. So is that something that you find that um, that you can work with any type of hair based on what I'm, I, I understand you're saying? Then. Yes. So I work from straight to curly to wavy to extremely cur curly here that we recognize as kinky here. Um, yes. From so, fine to thick, the cores, the whole nine yards. Okay. So we, one more, one thing I, 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 I gleaned from you last time we spoke, um, I'm not supposed to say kinky anymore, right? Kinky here is not. No, uh, it has their negative connotation. So we prefer extremely curly. I had no idea. I've been saying kinky here. Nobody told me. I wish something. So we, we say extremely curly now, right? Extremely it's really curly it? now. It's so, yes. It's curly. All right. So we have curly and extremely curly. Exactly. Whatever. Okay. Um, now, I know you have a presentation. I don't know if you want to do it or do you prefer me to keep asking you the questions because I'm going to, I have a bunch more questions to ask. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't get that question. I have, I know you have a, a slide presentation. Uh -huh. uh, do you want to do that or do you want me to ask, continue to ask you the questions because let's, I have yeah, so many let's, questions. Let's continue since we already started this way, it's fine. Okay. All right. Um, now I understand chemicals. That's my big thing. My wife has been dyeing her hair and I've been telling her, do not dye your hair, do not dye your hair because from what my understanding was, the dyes are carcinogenic. So enlighten us now. I think some of the things I thought about have, I have had misconceptions based on what you're telling me. So enlighten us, tell us. Well, you are know, the dyes harmful? Um, they can be harmful. It depends on how it's used and the amount of peroxide, ammonia, or the contents of the dye. But as far as um, carcinogenic, that has not been, a study has not, been proven up to this point that it is. But it can be harmful to the hair um, other, if it's used incorrectly. 
Okay. Are some dyes worse than others then? Yes, Are there they is. All equal. No, they're not. Um, remember the dyes have a content of ammonia, has a, a content of peroxide. So the more you use, um, the stronger it is, and overuse can cause damage to the hair. So, so if you dye your hair more often, you're more likely to get damage to the hair. Yes. Is that what you, uh, uh, that's my understanding. Yeah, the more yes. often you dye, if you dye too often, okay. Okay, what about other procedures? If you do other things on your hair also, does that oh, yes. apply There's... also to that? Remember, we are a uh, human nature. We our nature is to have what we don't want. Or oh, sorry, to yes, to have to want something that we don't have. So the persons with curly hair want it straight. Those who want it straight want it curly. Those who have dark hair want it light, and vice versa. So my job as a hair specialist can have to determine whether their hair can uh, sustain what they want. So I go ahead and examine it, and then try to see if this is um, a good um, process that what they've chosen. Um, so besides that, with this, um, so we have chemical service that's lightening the hair, extremely light. We have a color that goes extremely dark. We have straightening um, process done chemically, um, both keratin and just um, the commercial relaxers. And we also have permanent waves. These are all chemical services that are permanent. What about, um, and I'm going back to the dyes. Are there two types of dyes? I think that um, when we we're talking earlier, you mentioned that there's, there's a vegetable dye now that they use versus the old time dye. Um, is that correct? Well, uh, we have dyes that has to be, in order to remove color and deposit color, it has to be mixed with a chemical. A vegetable dye does not have to be mixed. They're made from plants, plant derivatives. So it's just a topical color that changes the hair color only to a certain degree without damaging the hair. Okay, all right. I, I understand a little bit better now. So the, 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 if you want just a slight change in color, it's better to use a vegetable yes. dye. Okay. Um, now let's talk about relaxers. Are they safe to use? Um, Yes and no. <laughs> they are safe to use if they're used correctly. But like, and relaxer can be actually um, epiliation. If it's left on too long, you can lose your hair. And that's why a lot of hair specialists are afraid to use it because um, with color, your hair's not gonna fall off immediately. But the relaxer, if it's used incorrectly and too strong, it can wash out at the mm -hmm. shampoo bowl. So are they um, okay. good? Yes, but um, when they, they originally came out, there was so much content of lye in them. Yes, a lot of people lost their hair. But because of you know time, um, our chemists that came up with um, putting uh, conditioners and treatments in the hair, in the, sorry, in the product, which makes it um, more, um, it's more, more controlled mm -hmm. for the hairs and leaves it in a healthier state after it's done. So now, um, how it's applied matters also? Does that, is that, is that yes. uh, correct or it doesn't matter? Application it makes all the difference in the world. Um, remember, the only part of our hair that needs to relax is, is the one that's now growing. It's, you cannot put relaxed hair, relaxer on top of relaxed hair. That's a no-no. So our average time of doing relaxes, um, which is from six, anywhere from six to eight weeks, and it's only applied to the new growth. If it goes beyond that, you are asking for damage here and you're infringing on its integrity. Okay. Um, are there any hair products out now that you consider unsafe to use? for the general public that they may just see on a shelf somewhere. Is that, um, are there products that you wouldn't recommend that are, you know, people going out and purchase? Um, actually, there are products out there that is really not healthy for the hair. Um, Can you, 
what may be in them or general idea? Of There's what products do? now, believe it or not, that contains formaldehyde. So those, um, okay. because I focus on healthy hair, those are products I would not use on someone's, on any of my clients. Okay. So formaldehyde is a no-no. Absolutely, Absolutely no-no. No. Yes. Okay. So everybody go back and pick up your bottles and look <laughs> Please at Please read them. the content. Yes. And those also, um, another one that has a high um, percentage of um, sulfate also is um, a no-no. Okay. Sulfate and formaldehyde. Yes. Okay. Um, how often should you use a relaxer then or a dye? You said you shouldn't use it too often, but you didn't give us a time. Is there a period of time you think it would be safe? Um, like every week? Every no, a relaxer should not be used less than six weeks to the minimum. And so a color, okay. you can do it um, up to four weeks, every four weeks. Okay. Um, let me go back to the old fashioned way. What about the hot phone? <laughs> I grew up in the and I, 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 we all like the old fashioned way. We know that, you know, the, how much it works. If you just didn't make it too hot, it would work. Is a hot comb still a viable option? Actually, we have um, emerged from the hot comb. We now use a tool called the, the um, flat iron, which does the same okay. thing. Um, but because um, it has, it's made out of different material from the um, known hot comb, it's um, safer on the hair and there's um, less chance of you getting burned or uh, overheating your hair. Oh, all right, so flat iron is replaced with hot comb. See, I didn't know. I'm behind the time. Uh, I'm catching up, though. I'm catching up. Yes. Um, now let's talk about hair extension and braiding. Um, do they, can those extensions cause hair loss? Um, they, well, the extension itself doesn't cause hair loss. The application makes a difference. Um, there's so many different um, ways that it's applied to the hair. It can be sewn on, it can be taped on, um, it's used on. Um, uh, and then the, if it's done correctly um, and removed in their uh, period, the correct period of time is no harm to the hair, but continuing use, especially around the hairline, uh, which is the weakest part of our hair, and around the top crown, um, we can ex um, experience um, hair weakness, which can cause um, hair loss, and also um, it can be, you know, cause some scalp irritation also, which can sometimes turn into or allergy or, um, you know, you can probably lose your hair, especially with the one that you tape on. The, what's harmful is the product they use to remove it. It's um, just imagine it, it's like removing glue from something. So it's not just gonna remove the glue, it's gonna also remove some of the layers of your hair, some of the cuticles. Okay. So which, which method do you think is the best thing if they're going, someone's going to do that, um, you know, which is the best way to, to apply it? Which would you recommend? I, all of them are, can be done. done. Um, their choice, it depends on the individual and how often it's taking, if it's taking care of while it's on the head. All those are choices there of the client that it can be used. Um, there are, it's the take the way they take care of makes all the difference. Okay. Um, does the weight of the hair make a difference? Because I see some people with some extremely long, long hair, and some with very short. Does the weight make a difference? Because it seems to me that it would pull more on your hair if you were if it's heavier. We, we, Please unmute yourself. You're, you're muted. Maybe unmute her. Okay, um, are you be good? Yeah. Can good. you hear me now? Yes. Okay, sorry. This is the me. sorry. Okay, there we go. Yeah. The weight of the hair we were talking about, is that uh, 
happen with the hair loss sometimes? Oh yes, uh, it's when it's too heavy for the hair, of course it's gonna pull on the hair and it cause the hair to fall out, definitely. Okay, so uh, we want to go with something that's gonna be reasonably, you know, the right weight or Yes, the right, the right amount and the right texture. Um, you don't want to do anything that's going to irritate the scalp or weaken the hair. Um, All right. But sometimes when the hair is too heavy. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Sometimes when the hair is too heavy, it can also destroy the hair follicles, which they're, you know, it's the base of where the hair grows and that's um, result in balding. Okay. Now, uh, how often I see some people have uh, different types of pieces in the hair and they, they don't wash it as often. How often should you wash your hair? Is it every day, every once a week, once a month? I mean, give us an idea of how often you think we should wash our hair to keep it healthy. We should all have a routine for our hair, just how we have um, hygiene for our body. The same thing applies for our hair. Now, the um, most straight hair has a tendency of being more oily than curly hair. So therefore, their hair has to be washed or shampooed more frequent than the curly hair. Um, but on a, for average curly person, you should wash it at least every four to seven days. Okay. Now let's talk about hair loss, alopecia. Um, is there a product that you know uh, on the market like that they can apply to their hair that prevent hair loss? I know you're not a doctor, but are you aware of their products that are out there that, that people use to reduce hair loss? Um, first of all, um, alopecia is not necessarily um, takes place because of their damage done to the hair. Most times it's done from your immune, your immunity. Um, like we can, it's an autoimmune, yes, okay. um, problem. Okay. Um, and most times we see it more in men than women. Um, but one of the things that comes when our job is not to treat the alopecia, but to recognize it, identify it, and recommend it to a dermatologist or a doctor. It's not our job to treat it. Okay. The only things that we can treat is uh, tinea capitis, which is the same as dandruff, um, those things, and also psoriasis or eczema. Okay, what if someone comes in with something like ringworm or lice? Um, what happens then? Okay, um, with the ringworm, usually they are, we know, um, usually when persons have a ringworm, it's um, contracted through unsanitized um, implement, uh, implements, instruments, like the razor that they cut the hair with or the scissors. If they have not been sanitized properly, it's so easy to contract uh, ringworms. It's more frequent in a barber shop than it is in a salon. Um, those, but those also can be treated with bacteria um, shampoos. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, um, in regards to the lice, sorry. Um, yeah. Luckily for us in the um, Afro um, community, uh, we, it's very seldom we contract lice. It's usually attached to long straight hair. Um, so I have never came across up to this point of anyone with curly hair, extremely curly hair that has lice. But the good thing about that is um, they have now salons open just to treat persons with lice. Okay, so there are places that are open just to treat people coming with things like lice. All right. Yes. That's if we have a, if anyone shows up in our salon, it's our job to recommend them to those persons, not to try to treat it or, or even take care of their client. Okay. Wonderful. Good, good, good. Now let's talk about hair growth. Um, a lot of people talk about losing hair, but um, are they coming out with it? They seem to be fairly young people, but they, they seem to be losing a lot of hair. Um, is there an over-the-counter product that would stimulate hair growth? And uh, talk to us about that, that aspect. Um, there's a lot of products out there now that can stimulate hair growth. Um, 
One of the uh, popular ones is, you, I think you've heard about is monoxidil, but we need to understand what really, um, how our hair grows. Um, I know a lot of people complain about when they comb their hair, they lose so many strands a day, they feel like they're balding, but when they look in the mirror, they have the same amount of hair. Um, the fact of the matter is that we can lose anywhere from 80 to 100 strands a day. That's normal. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you have a disorder or you're suffering from hair loss. That is normal to lose up to 100 strands a day. And to remember that our hair goes grows in cycles. So we have the antigen stage where it's active growing and it grows for complete seven years. Hey, seven years is completion, right? Um, and then we have the canogen stage. <laughs> um, it stops growing, but it only lasts three weeks. Isn't that wonderful? And then the telogen stage, the hair sheds and stays dormant um, before the new hair starts. So hair starts to spread out, and that's a, in a, a period of three months. All right, so let me get this clear. So your hair grows for about seven years, just grows rapidly, correct? Just keep growing, yes. And then mm -hmm. there's a period of three months where it stops growing? There's correct? a period, yes, yeah, okay. but it only lasts for, for three weeks. Wow. Isn't that awesome? I, I <laughs> that's it. Not, then the last stage in three months is the jet it moving. sheds and grows at the same time, yes. Wow, okay. Yes. Those are things I never knew about here, and I've studied a lot of <laughs> Yeah. Okay, um, is there anything more that we didn't cover that you'd like to, to impart to our, our listeners today on tours uh, about here? Um, is there any that we missed perhaps or any question or any viewer or anyone looking may want to put a question in the chat um, that you can ask her that uh, we'd love to, to, to have you uh, pose a question to her right now. Um, I know somebody asked for your phone number and um, to, so they can reach you later on after Sabbath. Okay. Um, is there a number you can give us that we can we can um, we can do that. Sure. Um, let me continue with um, the hair loss. That um, I want other people to also understand that you can have hair loss from, from an allergy reaction. Um, like I said, thyroid problems, stress related, uh, any kind of inflammation in the body, and even sometimes medicine. One of the um, main reasons I see people with hair loss is because of medicines they're taking. The first, the two main ones is high blood pressure medicine and diabetes medicine. Okay, so medications can also reduce their, their or increase your hair loss. Okay. okay. Yes. Yes. Um, do you see any, any questions? Does anybody else have any questions for her? I. I want you to think of some questions and we're going to have our special music now. And um, it's, you're in for a treat. We have her husband is going to sing for us, um, Mr. Richard Topher, and our guest is going to accompany him on the piano. I'm going to run outside and help with that. So uh, my phone number is 305. 903 8759. 305 903 8759. You can sit. Or you're going to sit. Okay, good.
Oh, that was wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, thank you. Um, they filled in at the last moment. They weren't, he wasn't supposed to be doing special music. And I thank him very much, very kind to, to do that for us. Um, in fact, he didn't get a chance to rehearse it. They, didn't, they just did it without rehearsal. So I, I hope you all could hear. I wish you all could hear it as well as I did, because I think with Ring Central, you lose a lot. But um, um, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you from the troopers. Now, we have some questions. Um, Louis, tell her, come on back on. We still, we still have some, some questions okay. in the chat here. Um, all right, I'm going to go through some of them. The, the one that I see here, is there a danger or risk of trying to change the texture of one's ear? That's what uh, someone has two questions, two people, different people ask the same question in the chat. So address that for us there is always a risk um so uh, the uh, danger it's kind of strong word um but as a specialist my job is to let them know how far we can take the hair without damaging without being a dangerous state okay what about gray hair in young people now is there a problem with that um 
is that strictly genetics or is it something they're not doing or or maybe a, some thing they're not eating or can you give us any information about the, that we wish we can say it's an unhealthy diet but now most is mostly genetic what about natural remedies then for hair loss um, um, does the diet affect that also or is that again strictly genetic uh, no, actually, um, our diet can contribute to our hair, just like our healthy body. Healthy food makes us have, uh, healthy food can give us health here also. Um, we also find out that there's a lack in vitamins that can cause um, hair deficiency. So therefore, we recommend vitamin B, um, B12, vitamin E. We also have biotin um, that is also essential for um, you to maintain your healthy hair without it falling. Okay, some of the vitamins and, and biotin. Okay, very good, very good. Um, my wife was asking, is there a way to tame gray hair that just sticks up? The wonderful thing about gray hair um, is like uh, they said, it's like as we change with character, so does our hair. The gray hair has a mind of its own, we call it. Um, actually, it's a it's stronger texture than your natural hair, and we also call it a stubborn hair. The hardest hair to work with is gray hair when it comes to changing its color, changing its texture. Um, yes, it does. It's a stubborn um, texture here. <laughs> so you're saying as we get older, we get more stubborn. Um, you said it, not did, not I. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, here's another question then. What about men now with beards? Do you rec recommend they shampoo and condition their beards or with things like the products that they may have out in the, um, on the shelves in the stores? Or what do you suggest we do? Or just regular soap and water? No, actually, uh, regular soap and water is good. But now, you know, we have come up with a line just for men. Um, it also has conditioners in it and also oils. Um, what I want men to know, the, um, the beard carries uh, so much germs in it that it must be washed daily and not take for granted because I know men are doing a lot of things now with their beard um, besides um, even relaxing it and putting color. But it's so much germs in that beard that needs to be washed daily. Okay, I think the men were doing that. Nobody told me that. Guys in the club didn't let me know. <laughs> All right. Um, I am totally out of questions unless anybody has any question they'd like to ask. Anybody who's online want to click on and ask a question, you feel free to. Um, you have her now. We're going to prepare to put her number in the chat for those of you who are online. Um, so we'll... Um, have that for you so that you can get a hold of her. Um, she has a, she works off of Kendall Drive, correct? Somewhere down here near Kendall yes. Drive. Yeah. Um, oh, I see another question in the I'm chat. I'm Kendall Drive, sorry. Okay, around Kendall, it's on 104th, you said? 124, behind Bahama Breeze Restaurant. Okay, I, 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 I know where that is, yeah. All right, it, uh, it's, um, is Vaseline good for your hair? That's um, Vaseline for years. Yes. Um, yes, we grew up with Vaseline, but we found out that it's a very um, heavy um, and pasty. So it does, it just sits on top of the hair and all it does is um, attract all the dust and the elements of the hair. So it makes your hair dirty faster. So we come up with a new um, oils that is a serum that is very light and it can penetrate the first um, layers of your hair, makes it more flowing and uh, healthier. Okay. So, but, but Vaseline of itself is not bad if somebody uses it, just that they just have to keep washing their it's hair It's not more. bad. Yes, I have to wash more often. And um, but if there's a better product out there, why not? Yeah, I remember the grease. I remember greasing down. And <laughs> <laughs> That's all we knew. Yeah, and, and, and the stocking top, we, is, is nobody doing that anymore? Is that still, uh, is that how it's still, 
some people still use that. They, they still do. But um, satin or silk is the better route to go. Okay. All right. Uh, any more questions? I don't see any more in my chat here. I'm checking right now. Um, I don't know if anyone who has one on YouTube, maybe John can can, can relate to us and we can answer it later. But if not, I think it's Jude has his hand raised. Who's that? No. Someone has their Jude hand raised. Jude has hand raised. Yes. Uh, I don't. Right. Yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. I had a question um, for, do you have any recommendations as far as a, a wash routine? I know it varies based on uh, different hair types and textures. And also, I, could you give a little bit of information about the lock method I've heard, where they suggest, I think, putting in like, after you wash your hair, you put in like a leave-in conditioner, like the L-O-C, like if you could give more clarification on that. Okay, uh, the right regimen to, um, to have um, healthy hair, shampoo the hair, always use a conditioner, always use a leave-in um, while it's uh, wet, and when it's dry, put a serum. That's the perfect routine to have to maintain healthy hair. How can I grow my edge? Um, yeah. There's a thing called stimulation. Um, we do at the salon itself, when you do a treatment, you're at the sink, we massage your hair. It is to get all the blood back to those areas, especially those areas that, um, that you're, that's weak. Um, we want to get the blood flowing there too, and that's the way you get all the nutrition back, um, flowing back to your hair follicles in order to stimulate hair growth. When you say edge, you mean right at the hairline? That hairline. Right? I think the person's referring to the hairline. Okay. All right. Yeah. Just so everybody's clear as to what we're talking about. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, well, I think we've exhausted all the questions. Thank you, Lois. Thank you, Richard. Um, the Trofords, they added quite a bit to our program today. And now we're going to transition a little bit into um, the psychological aspects of fear, and yeah, especially as it affects us as the African American uh, community, some of the things we've done, some of the things we've said, some of the things we've raised our kids up saying, "You have bad hair." You know, I, you know, um, I've heard people say that, and I remember I was on a cruise with Laldi Ned's dad, uh, and somebody we were on a on a on a excursion and somebody said something about bad here the, the guide says we were actually in dominican republic and he says they in their in their country they have a lot of people with good hair and and he immediately jumped on him and said no everybody's hair is good there's no such thing as bad hair because they all do the same thing that we're supposed to it's supposed to do for us so it doesn't matter how extremely curly it is or what kinky whatever you want to call it it's good here and so some of those things um even the way we treat each other's based on hair um an incident happened uh, a few months ago where someone we all know was supposed to sing a, do a, uh, for for uh, adventist group of people and because that person had hair color in their hair they were turned
uh, one psychologist who studies a lot about the issue of self-esteem and hair is Dr. Vivian Diller. And she came up with this idea of beauty self-esteem. And for her, beauty self-esteem is, uh, is really how we look influences how we feel and vice versa. Um, and so the way we look and the way we feel are really um, intertwined, very interrelated. Uh, and so if we're gonna talk about hair as Adventists, you know, we know lots of Bible verses about hair. And I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, some of these verses would be quoted, you know, a church for um, members who weren't following the rule, um, following what so scripture says. The way we look uh, and the way we feel so are really um, a couple of verses intertwined. But I just to touch on the first Very one interrelated by Paul, where he says, uh, and so uh, does we're going to talk about here, teach you that if a man wears long hair, it is a disgrace for him. But so that's in 1 Corinthians eleven fourteen, And then in 15, he says, but if a woman has long hair, it is her glory for her hair is given to her as a covering. And then Peter jumped into the mix and Peter was like, well, you know, don't let your adorning be external, like the braiding of hair. So um, he says, uh, and so you know, growing up, uh, does we're going to talk me, about me, teach you that if a man wears long hair, it was frowned upon if a man wore long hair. Now I'm going to tell you something. Len might not want me to say, but when I met him, his hair was almost as long as my hair. He had a huge afro, like out to hair, the biggest one I had ever seen. <laughs> it was so big that when he took his class picture, his, his afro exceeded the parameters of the picture. And people would see him now and they go, wait a minute, he has no hair. But, you know, in those days, things were quite different. Um, so long hair was frowned upon. I know he was at school and he would get in trouble for having such long hair. You know, nowadays, things have changed a little bit, but maybe not as much. And for women, you know, it was always a thing about, oh, you know, long hair is preferred. So you always want to have long hair because, you know, the Bible says, that long hair is, is for her glory. So there was that whole um, encouragement. And then what happens if you didn't have long hair? You know, not everybody does. And then the whole thing about braiding of the hair, especially braiding of the hair for men was something that was very frowned upon. Uh, I'll give you guys a, I remember being in high school and coming home um, my sister was braiding one of our neighbor's hair, a, a, a boy. And my dad came home shortly after I did. And he said, what? Don't, don't, don't do that. That's, that's, not, that's not to be done. That's not to be done. She, he chased the boy back to his house um, because, you know, that's not what we're supposed to do. So we have very, especially as, as uh, West Indian heritage people, we have a lot of uh, strong views about hair and how it ties into uh, who we are. So that's what we're gonna get into a little bit today. So let's look back at history. So historically, um, hair that was attractive, that was decorated, was what people valued. And if you had beautiful hair, if you had long hair, that was associated with, you know, with your high status and with being wealthy. And so if you didn't, you could wear wigs and they would have elaborate wigs that they would have in ancient times, like Greek and Roman times. And if you could wear fancy wigs, that showed how much wealth and status you had. Uh, closer now in the colonial period, when the United States first started, white curly wigs were the style, like you see in this man on the screen here. Um, and today, even in England, if you are a lawyer or a judge, you wear one of these curly wigs even to this day. So, so there is this idea about elaborate hair, long hair as something that is something to strive for. Now, well, let's talk about how it works in, in our stages of development. So if you were, I don't know about the rest of you, but I was a bald baby. 
I never had one strand of hair when I was born. Now, babies with thick hair are seen as more robust than those like me who had little to no hair. And in adolescence, you know, when boys start sprouting hair, that's associated with virility. And with girls, once they start having hair, it's associated with fertility. And we see that if you have hair that's thick and luxurious as a woman, that's associated with sexuality and sensuality. And so you see as this woman here, this may not actually be her hair. It might be a weave or something to accentuate, to give it that fullness and that thick, luxurious look so that she looks more attractive. So now what happens if we're still talking about developmental issues, we notice that in midlife, we see the thinning and losing of hair. And for women, we can we see it in the front. Some, some women actually um, start balding on the top like men. Um, and that is associated with aging or they have poorer health or they have some kind of health issues. They're also considered not to be as fertile or, or not to be as virile as you know if you're a man. So there are all these things that society is, is, is teaching us and we're believing. And let's talk about how it plays in terms of aesthetics. Think about how you look right now. So hair frames your face. So you see your face and the hair is around it. So that's the first, the most important feature on you is your face and the hair is the frame of your face. So then the other things people would notice would be your smile, they notice your eyes, they notice your skin, and then they notice hair. So hair is something very noticeable about you. In fact, they said, if you meet somebody in a social interaction, you remember three things. You remember height, weight, and hair. So hair plays a big role in, in the way um, others see us and the way we see ourselves. Now, let's talk about biblical times. So in biblical times, we had men who had long, thick hair, uh, vitality, masculinity. We talk about Samson. Now, Samson, in contrary to the text that we read earlier, was encouraged to not cut his hair. Um, because he was set aside for a special reason. And he was striking. Remember, if, if most of the men were wearing short hair and there was this man with long flowing hair, he would definitely capture your attention. And he had muscles and he looked strong and he looked attractive to people. Now we had Absalom, King David's son, who was again noted for his long hair, um, which actually led to his death. But his long hair was something that was very striking about him. And he was seen as very attractive yet again. So there was this idea of this long, thick hair being something to strive for. In more recent times, Black men with long hair have been seen as being kind of cool or hip or whatever the young people say these days. Um, but they can also be seen as dangerous or scary. Uh, you see somebody with braids or you see somebody with dreads uh, and, and people think, oh, that person might be going to harm them in some way. And they can also be treated unfairly, not just by the majority culture, but even by their own culture. I, um, I was speaking to a, a student um, about this topic earlier, and he said that he has locks, um, short locks, and, and he went to um, get on a plane. And he had a, a preferred pass to board early. He went to board and he was blocked from getting on the plane by a black flight attendant who, who did not want him to pass and thought he was going where he wasn't supposed to go. And he had to show her his preferred boarding pass, but she still took his bag and shipped it when everybody else was able to take their bag on. Um, he said he he went to certain other businesses and they would stop him and ask him, like, what are you doing here? Why are you here? And this is by other black people. White people tend to look at him and you can he can see the question in their eyes, but they often don't approach him or say something to him. He gets that treatment from, you know, other 
other black people. Part of that could be uh, that some black people might see somebody who dresses in this uh, way that's outside of the norm as maybe hurting the chances of people who follow the rules, who dress in accordance to the norms, um, or they feel like they need to watch for this person who's going to do something, again, harmful or dangerous and, and hurt the um, hurt Black people's uh, reputation as a whole kind of a thing. So what happens when men start to lose their hair? Well, you know, there's embarrassment. Uh, and, you know, early on, they might try to hide it. Um, but then when they see that it's really changing and, and it's coming full force, they experience some grief. Um, they experience some sadness, some depression. And they also have some some low self-esteem because men's uh, view of themselves is also tied in to the hair that they have. Now, the thing with hair is it's different within a family even. Um, I can think of a family that I know that has um, two, has two brothers. One brother died at 90 with a full head of hair and the other brother um, went bald in his 20s. So it's really genetics, it's, it's the luck of the draw. And, and you kind of have to, I guess, make peace with, with what hand you have been dealt. But you can see as it starts off as a little spot, you do what you can to cover it. But as the spot grows or the hair recedes from the front, it becomes fairly obvious to everyone what is going on. So what do men do to hide their hair loss? Well, we know about wearing hats and caps and stuff like that. And if you remember our former president with the famous comb over, you know, that's something that is done by people who have um, straighter hair, they can do a comb over. And this is something I didn't even know about before. I only learned this in um, investigating this topic about the man weave. Uh, and so we see on this slide that the guy to the right, that's how he looks in the first picture, and you see how he looks in the second picture after he's had this weave attached to his head. Now, of course, it's glued on there. And so, again, you get into some of the things that Lois talked about earlier about, you know, how you can damage your hair um, or damage your skin with this kind of thing. And then the other one, which, again, I did not know about, my son told me about this one was the Beijing hair dye, which you can see on the left set of pictures where you see that um, they use a dye to give the illusion of hair and to fill in the missing parts so that they look as if they have hair. And then we get to the part where you have to make a decision. So with men, it's like, okay, do I retain the hair I have and just cut it low? like the first picture on the left, or do I shave it off and go bald? And then there is the decision whether you want to go with a small beard or whether you want to go with a full beard. Um, there is this idea that uh, the fuller the beard, the better. Um, and, you know, you guys can tell me something about your view of this if you think that this is more in line with uh, what some people say, overcompensation because of the lack of hair, or it's just a style. I think it's something that is true for different people for different reasons. So I'm gonna leave that up to you in terms of why people do what they do on, in, that, in this regard. So women, women experience hair loss as well. So they also go with embarrassment because you know women are expected to have hair. You know, in our society, bald men are becoming the norm. It's, it's okay to be bald, but for women, that is not acceptable. So um, there's this embarrassment. They also go with have depression and grief and low self-esteem because of not having their crown and glory, as the Bible says. So how do women cope with that? Well, women have more options, I think, than men. 
because, you know, women can wear wigs, um, they can wear weaves, they can have, uh, you know, head wraps and hats and all kinds of things that they can do to uh, cope with the loss that they have. But let's talk about what is influencing hairstyles. So we know that social media is a very strong um, player in this. What people see in social media is how they feel they have to look. And then we see advertising, whether on TV or in magazines, um, billboards, you know, in our Western culture, the white blonde woman is seen as the ideal with long blonde hair. And so the goal for many women who are not white is to have hair that looks like Caucasian hair. And this quote is from Bandili. She is an African model who was interviewed by the British Broadcasting Company um, because there is this issue now in, in Africa where a lot of women, uh, because of braiding and uh, uh, attaching weaves to their hair, are losing a lot of hair, especially in the front region of their hair. And, and so this was her quote. And she said, every woman feels more sophisticated with a weave. Half of us feel like when you've got a long weave and long hair, you look a bit more beautiful and you're accepted better in society. So there's this societal pressure to have this long hair and to look like you're not um, embracing who you really are. You're like trying to look at another, as another culture. And so there was originally this pressure to look white, to have long hair, to straighten hair. But today there is this increased interest in natural hairstyles. And some professions, although there is this increase in natural hairstyles and people are now dressing, um, going out, working, like my uh, the student who is an engineer and he's going to work with, with locks. Um, and I know attorneys who are going to work with natural hair, um, but there's still some professions that consider black hairstyles to be unacceptable and, and they look down upon it. Uh, and so that's something that is still a work in progress for people. So if all these things are happening to you, um, if you choose a profession that is expecting you to look a certain way and you're like, and I want to be true to myself, then, you know, you're, you're struggling with the, um, the whole idea of should I be true to me or should I fit in with what is culturally expected of me? So then we get to my favorite topic. So some of you may know or may not know, I don't know, that I have decided to go gray as of July of last year. Now, as my husband mentioned earlier, he has been after me not to dye my hair. But the way I started dyeing my hair is an interesting story. So um, my son, who was, I want to say, about seven at the time, uh, I started going gray right around that time, which was around 40. And he said to me one day, he says, mom, can you dye your hair? I don't want people to think you're my grandmother. And I was like struck. And I was like, wow, I must be looking really old. And so from that day, I dyed my hair. Well, fast forward now, he graduated from high school, still dyed my hair. And I was like, okay, well, he's going to college. I've got to take pictures at his college graduation. I'm going to, you know, keep dyeing my hair. He graduates from college, goes on to medical school. Okay, four more years. So four more years dyeing my hair. So now he's like, this uh, next month he's graduating um, from residency. And But in the meantime, he got a baby daughter. Well, he, his wife got pregnant. And I, I said to myself, you know, why am I doing this? This is something that I was doing for my son when he was young, but he's older now. He doesn't even remember the conversation. And what am I doing? So the current movement, which is something that's been gaining momentum, 
is to be your authentic self. And that's the idea that's happening now with, with women embracing their natural hair and being true to who they really are. So as part of the idea of being my authentic self is why not be my authentic self in color? So there is this big uh, debate over to die or not to die. And many women really struggle with this. Now, the, the silver hair has become popular with young people. And they literally, as they see in this picture here, they actually put highlights, gray highlights in their black hair to have the look of silver hair. And so now it is becoming more and more acceptable for younger and younger women to be natural, to grow their hair in and let it be gray if that's the color that it is. Now, the Bible says, and this is now my favorite verse, gray hair is a crown of glory. It is gained in a righteous life. As a gray-haired woman, I really like that verse. Proverbs 16, 31. But for many women, this is also an issue of self-esteem. Because there's a fear of looking old. Um, uh, people have said, oh, uh, oh, you look so much older than your husband. Um, to women who dye their hair gray. And when men hair, hair go gray, they say men look distinguished. When women go gray, they say women look old. So there is this uh, discrepancy in the way gray hair is perceived in the sexes. And there's also the societal pressure to, um, to look young. And so um, one, one woman told me, and she's in her 80s, and she said, I will dye my hair until I die. Um, and I said, well, who are you fooling? Everybody knows that you're gray. She says, yes, they might know it, but they don't know it for sure. Uh, and so we have this, this still this pressure to, um, to fit in to this mold, to fit into some societal expectation. And then there's also the fear of age discrimination. If you're going into a job and you're looking gray, will you be considered, oh, you're getting close to retirement. So now we don't need to, uh, we may need to let you go versus somebody who is um, all dark haired and, and um, appears younger. So there's that idea of age discrimination that also plays into the mix. So, um, you know, when you talk about hair and you talk about self-esteem, your hair is a vital part of who you are, but it's important to style your hair for you, not to style your hair for society, not to style your hair for somebody else, to do what makes you happy. Now for you, for one person, it might be to die. For one person, it might be to be natural. For one person, it might be to wear a weave. For another person, it might be to, to you know, uh, shave your hair and be bald. Uh, it is, your hair is not who you are. It's something you have, or in some cases, something you don't have. But you can use your hair to express yourself. So make your hair an expression of who you are and not a reflection of other people's values to you. Uh, and so when I was thinking about this topic and, and approached by my husband to talk about self-esteem, I realized that there's so much about hair that is so individual. And so the questions that people have about hair really um, vary and are very individual. And so I want to open up the this chat now for people to ask questions about hair and to let them um, bring up things that are of concern to them. Because let me tell you, um, some people believe that wearing natural hair looks unfinished, unpolished. And other people think, well, that's the way God made me. And so who is right? You know, it's all a matter of perception. And so it is what perception are you um, holding at this time? And how are you able to come to terms with your hair and the way your hair makes you feel?
So I'm going to open it up for questions at this time because hair is a very touchy topic that so many of us uh, will have questions about. So I'm going to now open it up for everybody to, to um, share their point of view about this. And I'm going to stop sharing at this time um, and just open it up for questions. Um, while they, um, they're formulating questions for you, um, there's one question that was relayed to me about that I'll send back to Lois. Uh, Lois, um, someone asked, sent in the chat, um, they wash their hair with hot, hot scalding water every day. Is that good for hair? Or is that something that's detrimental to hair? Uh, could you please um, enlighten us as far as that goes? <laughs> Sorry, this is question. Lenny, you need to mute. Sorry, can you ask the question again, please? Yes. Um, the question is about hot water. Um, taking a shower with very, very hot, hot water every day. Is that detrimental to, to uh, the hair? Yes, just how you can scald your skin with hot water, you can also scald your hair. That's not a good idea. You should always use tippet water or cold. It's the, actually the best. Wonderful, thank you, thank you. Now let's turn to questions for Judy. Um, uh, any questions anyone has concerning the, the uh, her presentation? You can come on, you can open up and ask it. Um, I had a question, uh, but I'll hold on to mine for a little bit longer. Um, I'd like to hear some other questions, if anyone has any more questions. There is one question on the, on the chat, and that is, how do you regain your confidence after losing your hair? Um, so I don't know if this is a man or a woman. Um, so if you have lost your hair, uh, if you're a woman, you tend to just cover it. So most people don't notice what is happening. For men, it's it's more obvious and it's very unlikely for them to hide it. So the idea of recognizing that your hair is not you. Your hair is a part of you, but it's not who you are. So uh, it's just like I have now changed my appearance. Uh, and so this is my new look. And it's not that it's a good versus a bad look, it's just a different look. And so it's just adjusting to a different look and not labeling it as a bad thing. And that helps you in terms of regaining your confidence. Because when you see somebody who is bald or you see somebody who is, um, who has lost their hair and, and they carry themselves with a sense of confidence, that person is less likely to attract negative attention simply because for them, it's like, well, this is who I am. You know, I know one lady who has alopecia. Alopecia is when, you know, your hair, you've lost your hair and she has no hair, no hair on her head at all. And so she comes to church. Sometimes she comes to church completely bald with her dress on and that's it. Or another other time she will come with beautiful head wraps, uh, beautiful colors. And so one day I asked her, I said, how does, how, how do you manage this? And she said, well, you know, I had to come to terms with who I am. This is me, I cannot change. So I can either walk around feeling sorry for myself or I can accept this and 
move forward. And the way she moved forward was she was like, I'm claiming it. And she's totally confident in herself. She's like, this is who I am. This is how God made me now. And I'm going to just be glad in what I am. And it's that kind of confidence. It's that I say, if you don't feel that way, fake it till you make it. Because it's something that comes from use, from trying it and realizing that we all believe that there's a spotlight on us, that everybody's paying attention to us. And in reality, most people are paying attention to themselves. And so when you get over the idea that everybody in the world is looking at you and commenting on you, uh, and you realize that everybody's kind of caught up in their own world, it helps you to be more confident in being who you are. Actually, that was one of the questions. What What do you do? <laughs> that was my question. If that, uh, to improve your self-image, uh, if you've lost your hair. Um, the other, uh, I have actually two patients, women who are completely bald, and they always carry themselves so well. Um, I commented to one of them, also myself, I said, I, I, I like the fact that you come just as is, without any wrap or hat or anything like that, and, and you carry yourself so elegantly. I just love your look. I said that to her. And um, she, she thanked me and she said, yeah, it's, it's who I am. So I have to be true to myself, essentially the same thing. Um, um, what do you say to young people though, um, or to, to those of us who are in higher positions or older ones, and the young ones are coming up and seeing them wearing the long hair and they have it, they're extremely curly. And it seems like if the older ones are buying into what the media is saying, the young ones will automatically buy into that also. What can we do to try to prevent that for our young people to accept themselves as who they are? I, I, I really have a burning desire for this question because I look at my granddaughter and I don't want her to be feeling that she's anything less than anybody else. And if her hair is curlier. And so I'm really, I think that brought it really strongly to me and so what do you say to everyone, not just to me, but to all of us? Um, how do we, as a society or group or a church, change that perception to some degree? Okay, so, so the, the idea of um, trying to fit into this mold that society has set for us people will feel that pressure. The only way it changes is for those of us who, who want to change, to try to make that change. So a few years ago, natural hair was just completely out. And so now natural hair is coming in and being accepted. So you can see that societal influences can change. So, so when, when people, um, accept you for who you are and not that you have to fit in with someone else. It doesn't happen overnight. It's something that has to, has to develop. People within a group has to change expectations because if you see your mother doing something, your grandmother has done something, your mother has done something, your aunt's doing something, you feel that pressure to be like them. And then you know, you, the people that you admire on, on social media, you feel a pressure to be like them. So there is this whole thing uh, uh, where it has to be not just one person, but it has to be a, a community effort. Now, there's something uh, that was in the last question that I forgot, I didn't notice. It says, can stress cause hair loss? Yes, stress actually can cause hair loss uh, because it decreases the number of hairs found. It, it, it affects the way the hair regrows and um, now, the one thing that they say is they say, oh, stress can turn your hair white overnight. No. <laughs> what, it, what you see has already grown out, and that's not going to change unless you dye it. So it can't turn white overnight. Um, so I wanted to clarify that. Now, talking about bias in the workplace, um, there is this idea that if your hair is, the new term is extra curly, um, you're supposed to contain it, restrain it. You know, you're not supposed to let it out, you know? Uh, and so 
you see white people who have their hair looking like they just stuck their fingers in a socket and it's all like all over the place. And that's like style. But somebody who has, you know, extra curly hair, that is seen as not put together. And so there is that bias that exists in that regard. Uh, and so when you when you come to, to work and you've got your hair in an Afro um, and the Afro doesn't look pristine, then you get that feedback like, you know, like, why do you look so unkempt? So there is that societal pressure still that we need to fit into a mold. Now, um, let's see here. There was another question. Can I say something real quick? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Evening, yeah. everybody. Um, so I do want to piggyback on two things that were said. And I think the first one is definitely that it really does start at home and it really does start with your own family members. Because mm -hmm. I will say, you all know that I have been through quite a hair journey. I know everybody <laughs> has seen it from every color to every texture that I have done. Um, so I will definitely say that confidence in owning it is definitely number one, because when I decided to cut my hair off, that was just a, I just wanted to do it. Mm. Even though I had all these alternatives for if I didn't like how it looked on me and the worries that I had, but it was just like, at the end of the day, it was definitely the confidence in owning it that I think really made it made it for me realize that hey this is my hair this is just something that i can control this this is just what i choose to do so whether you like it or not that's your own business um granted i am older so i don't care um, <laughs> but no it is your own business but when it comes to you know that whole worry about like your grandkids or your kids it really does start at home with you having to catch your own self in what you said i know that there have been plenty of times which i know my own parents probably won't even remember this especially my mom but i remember there were many times where um, when I was coming off of my for real, for real weave straight look that if I did or went to like, I remember as a function, it was a specific function I went to and I was just like, mm, I do not feel like wearing a wig. So I was just like, I'm just going to curl my own hair. And my mom was just like, I mean, you didn't want to do something a little bit nicer and just more appropriate for it. And you know, no fault at all to her, because again, this is something that, you know, growing up with our lovely church members and our lovely island background people, I've heard from many, many of members, many of people, where it's just like, when it's, when it's more to the curly side, you sure about that one? When it's a little bit to the straighter side, it's just like, that's more appropriate or even, if the, the color that you dye it is more appropriate and darker versus if it's a louder, just crazier color. And I, it, for me, it really does start at you making, you you and your household making it a okay thing to be like, wear your own hair, encouraging it for you to wear your own hair. Um, that's one. And then the second thing is we do have to realize that there's like kind of like two ways that we can go through the media that feeds what we're doing. There's our own social media, which is pretty much like whatever apps you're using. And like, that's the things that you can be supporting. And that's the things that you would also want to like encourage your own family members to be a part of, because that's the stuff that you can kind of control because your traditional media, they're just, it's traditional media. They're always going to go with you know, either somebody that's super dark is really pretty right now, somebody that's super skinny, you have to be super tall. Like media is always going to go, the traditional media is always going to have what they're going to do. But it is about surrounding yourself, surrounding your loved ones and encouraging those around you with what they do. Because it's a hard, it's hard when people start balding, it's hard when people start graying. And it's worse when you have, mm, you don't want to die that? Like all oh, that gray, you're too mm -hmm. young for that. Like, or just yep. being, you know, just encourage in that. And it's it's kind of the, you know, at the end of the day, you start pointing out things that, you know, tick you off the most because it affects you. For me, I was just like, I'll be honest. I started dying my hair. I, I started graying when I was in sixth grade, really, really young. Mm -hmm. 
And in the beginning, I was trying to pull those suckers out because I was just like, oh, too young for this. But after a while, I was just like, I like this. What can I do with this? What can I add to this? And so definitely it becomes that whole, you you know, you being encouraged and people encouraging you and you just being confident in what the Lord gave you to work with. Because it don't matter if I got an inch of hair on my head or however long these braids are right now. You know, at the end of the day, um, I'm not my hair, my character, my personality. It's not just based on my hair. I can lose all my hair and that's not going to change who I am. My hair is not going to determine whether I'm going to make it into the kingdom or not. Like it's, it's just an item. It's, it's just an item. And I think we have to realize that sometimes we put too much important importance on the style, the way it looks, if it's acceptable for this and that. And it's just like, no, it's an item. It's an item. You can have it or you cannot. And right. You and you know it. what? Most For most people, hair will grow back. You know, for most people, hair will grow back. So if you cut it, for most people, it will grow back. And the idea that like short hair is less attractive or like curly hair is less attractive, it's all a matter of opinion and perception. It's not based on anything like real, you know? So be who you are. And I do agree that we need to start claiming. So now that I've decided to go gray, I've been telling everybody to go gray. And, and everybody's like, at first people would be like, my patients and people who would see me, they would like stop and look at me. And the patient would walk in the room, like, you know, after COVID and we went back to the office, they're like, and I was like, yep, I'm going gray. And they're like, oh, but it actually looks nice. And I was like, yes, because it's me, <laughs> you know? And, and people have been very respectful in my opinion for me but it's not always for everybody. There was another lady whose husband told her she needs to dye her hair because he does not like gray hair. And she said she felt the pressure that she had to go and dye her hair because she wouldn't be pleasing her husband. And that's part of what God wants her to do is to please her husband. You know, that's a whole other thing that we can get into, (laughs) but I, I think that it, first of all, comes with accepting who you are and it is for each person, their own thing. Now, the question that we have here is, do you believe that cutting or changing your normal hairstyle is a coping mechanism? Uh, changing your hairstyle is a normal thing to do. You get tired of looking the same way. Very few people look the same way they did when they were younger and changing with the styles keep you looking fresh and young. It's okay to change your style. So it's, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It can be a very healthy thing. Um, let me say that uh, Janelle has been one that I've always looked forward to see what her next style is going to be because I remember the, the short green look. I mean, I just remember. So I, I never pay attention to people's look, and except for Janelle, and I love the way she has done her hair. I just, I just love it. I just love. It, it seems that there's always something new that's different. So um, have confidence, young lady, have confidence. They're yes. Appreciated. Yeah. I have a question, though, a question somebody sent me, uh, texted me, and probably Lois can answer this one. Um, for an older person, can a person find out if their follicles are dead and future growth is not possible? How, how do you know that? Or do you just accept it because you don't see anything coming out? Um, yes, a dermatologist can determine that. That's not in my field. But if they go to a specialist or a dermatologist or um, specialist doctor, they can determine that for them. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, any more questions for for Judy? Any more questions for, for Lois? Any more? I think we've exhausted all of the questions. Um, um, Somebody was asking about biases in the workplace. I think you answered that. Um, and, um, so um, I have one more thing. If we have a little time before we have Vesper, I have a Kahoot game about hair. Um, so if 
the powers that be can allow me to share a screen. Let me see if I can figure out how to do this now. Okay. Uh, you can, can play a little bit on the phone. Yeah, hold on a minute. I'm trying to. There we are. Can we see that? Can everybody see it? Good. Those who are going to play the Kahoot game. Signing with the number to pin, go to Kahoot 4504587. Get it, go to Kahoot on your phone. I don't see anybody yet I'm waiting for players. So open up the Kahoot um, app on your phone or on your IC1. Mimi, objective, AJ21. So we have two. Don't worry, it's gonna be an easy, easy Kahoot. Any more? Download the Kahoot app. If you don't have it on your phone, just go to it online and click on continue. Oh, 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 winner. We got winner. All right. Give a few more seconds for somebody else, anybody else who wants to be a part of this. I only have three. Is that going to be it? No mass, no mass. Little McCallum. Uh oh. GLG, CLG. All right. I'll give you a few seconds more since most people are still coming. We have five. All right, tasty. I think uh, at least we would have had one with a nickname of bald or something, or flowing hair, or extremely curly. <laughs> Come on now, we can be inventive with the names. No extremely curly? I don't know. <laughs> All right. Is that one, two, three? We have 10. I'm getting ready to close it out. Okay, man bun. Okay, he lost one. Did he lose man bun? Okay, I'm gonna count down. All right, ready? 10, nine, eight, seven, Six, five, four, man bun one, three, two, my crown. Okay. All right. We're going to start. So, ready? Here we go. Four, five, zero, four, five, eight, seven for those who are late. Here we go. Starting now. Here in the Bible. Three, two, one. Who lost his strength when his hair was cut? Bob Marley, Peter, Samson, or Adam? Bob Marley, Peter, Samson, or Adam? Who 
lost his strength when his hair was cut. Okay, let's see. The answer was, of course, Samson and Mimi is ahead right now. All right, ready for question two? Who ultimately lost his life because his long hair was caught in a tree branch? Albert Einstein, David, Joseph, or Absalom? Albert Einstein, David, Joseph, or Absalom? Who ultimately lost his life because his long hair was caught in a tree branch? Time's up. Of course, it's Absalom, it's David's son. And I wouldn't go over the whole story because of time, but we'll move to the next question. Again, who's in, Mimi's still ahead, but CLG, whoever that is, is next. Question number three, who dried the feet of Jesus with her hair? Mary, Martha, Delilah, or Ruth? Mary, Martha, Delilah, or Ruth? Seven, six, Five, four, three, two, one. Time's up. All right, we have seven who got that right. It's Mary and, okay, Mimi's still ahead. Objective AJ21 is second. All right, let's move to the next question. Whose hair was not singed despite standing in a fiery furnace? Peter, James, and John, Peter, Paul, and Mary, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, or Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Whose hair was not singed despite standing in a fiery furnace? Peter, James, and John, Peter, Paul, and Mary, Matthew, Luke, and, Matthew Mark, and Luke, or Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Okay, we have eight people who got that right, three missed it, and let's see who's still ahead. Mimi, still ahead, objective. AJ21 is still right behind us. All right, question number five. The Ancient of Days is described in Daniel 7 as having this type of hair. Uh, pure like wool, white like snow, ruddy like his skin color, and lastly, all of the above. Pure like wool, white like snow, ruddy like his skin color, or all of the above. The ancient of days is described in Daniel 7 as having this type of hair. And the answer is pure like wool. Pure like wool. And Mimi still ahead, objective still second, same order seems to, it hasn't changed. Let's move on to the next question. Number six, if a man has long hair, it is a blank to him. A blessing two shame, three curse, or glory. If a man has long hair, it is a blank to him, a blessing, a, sh right, a shame, curse, or glory. Shame. Okay, and um, we had a, quite a mixture of people with this question. I had a little difficulty with it. Let's see who's ahead. Okay, Mimi's 4,710 4, and objective 4,248. So standards are pretty much the same still. All right, question number, question number seven. The Bible says that the woman should not clap her hair with gold or a pearls, cornrows, weaves, or silver. Pearls, cornrows, weaves, or silver. The Bible says that women should not clap their hair with gold or whatever this next item is. Pearls, cornrows, weaves, or silver. And it says pearls. Okay, still Mimi's ahead. And right, let's move on to two more questions. They're actually eight, nine, and ten. Esau was the blank son. A younger, two hairy, three dishonest. Or mother's favorite, younger, hairy, dishonest, or mother's favorite. Esau was the blank son. What was Esau? 
Okay, it's the answer is Harry. And six people got that correct. Okay. And again, the order has not, oh yes, man bun is moving up now. Man bun is moving up. All right, let's move to the next question. Nine out of 10. The Bible says that the very hairs of your head are, will turn gray, are numbered, will fall out, or are like grains of sand. Will turn gray, are numbered, will fall out, or are like grains of sand. That's what the Bible says. It says that the very hairs of your head are blank. And numbered is the answer, and most people got that one correct. And again, it's the order. Oh, who's LOL? Have just moved up into fourth place. Okay, and we have one more question. Here we go. Luke seven ten states that the hairs on our head are numbered, and we are more valuable than blank. A sparrows, B gold, C rubies, or eagle. Sparrows, gold movies or eagles that we are more valuable than these one of these uh, items here one of these selections either sparrows gold movies or eagles what does the bible say it says sparrows and let's see who is the winner here man bun is number one number two objective and number three, oh, okay, I'm sorry, I had it went backwards. So Mimi was first, um, sorry, objective was two, and then man bun was the third. Thank you all for participating. I really appreciate that. Uh, I think it probably was a little bit of fun and it wasn't too difficult. Um, it was pretty much straightforward. So, so far the whole day has been on here and we're going to close out with Vespers with our Elder Walker and I'm going to bring him on um, and then we'll do announcements after if there are any announcements to be uh, to be given out. Um, so one of our, our Elder, Elder Paul Walker is a member of our, our um, health team. He's also um, counselor does a lot of psychological work with young people and he's going to present our Vesper thought at this moment. All right. Can everyone hear me? We hear you. Do you want a picture? Uh, okay, let me do that. See you. All right. Well, uh, thank you, Lenny, for this hairy discussion. <laughs> uh, and, and, uh, Hi, hold on a second. Elder Walker, before we do, Lenny, I need you to take off Kahoot. Okay, let me do that. Uh, I got to figure out how to get it off. Yeah, I'm trying to do this. Stop, stop sharing. sharing. There we are. Stop sharing. Thank you. Go ahead. Sorry. All right. Um, certainly, this has been a very hairy discussion, and um, interesting information has been shared. And um, I, I do believe that we are we were all um, benefited from it. Uh, good e good evening, everyone, again, and um, thank you for being a part of this program. Uh, so let me continue with this uh, hairy discussion here today, gone tomorrow. Um, Throughout um, many generations, our hair has played a significant role in the way people see themselves, as well as how they present themselves. You know, for example, on one hand, having a full head of hair signifies youth, beauty, fer fertility, virility, strength, and even confidence. While on the other hand, a loss of hair or even the grain of one's hair signifies aging, decline, sometimes even decline in strength, um, decline in self-esteem, or even decline in our self-worth or the value that we place on ourselves. 
Uh, we have heard from the psychological perspective already, so I'm not going to address that part, but from a physiological perspective, the hair helps to regulate our body temperature. Uh, they lie flat on the skin when we are warm and they rise when we go cold or even when we experience a certain sudden change in, in temperature, like you, know, you said you have goosebumps. And when you look, you see notice that the hairs are standing up during that time. So they, they helps with the regulation of body temperature. They helps to keep the, 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 uh, the, the heat in the body and they really don't make the body warm per se, but they only help in maintaining the body temperature in regulating it. Um, also, they, they also help in giving the skin protection from the hot sun. Uh, so so that, that's a function that the hair plays in, in protecting the, 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 the scalp from the hot sun. Part of the human body where their body heat can be lost at the highest rate is the head. And so the hair helps to, to keep some of those body temperatures so that, that we don't lose a lot of heat quick, uh, real quickly um, from our head. It is also the area with the most hair that head uh, from birth until the aging process is fully in play, then that's when we start losing our hair. One's genetic identification, your DNA can also be found um, just through one strand of hair, we can identify our, ourselves. But like we, like we know in every aspect of the body, as sin enters, there's a decline. And therefore the hair is not, is not going to be a permanent thing. It is still a temporary thing, like every part of the body. And so we should not, um, you know, make the hair the defining thing of who we are. It's really not the defining thing of who we are. Who we are is really within us. That's who we are. So we, we see here that um, what does the Bible really say about hair? Well, it says a lot about hair. You'd be surprised to know the amount of text in the Bible that talks about hair. I'm just going to mention a, a, a few today and, and the, the significance of them. Uh, sometimes we, we, we may use them in, in, in a, uh, and, and Judith allude to the fact that sometimes we use it to, to like to punish people or to, you know, because they may, may not be following in line with what we believe and what we think should be happening. And in 1 Corinthians 1, um, 11 verse 15, it tells us that long hair is a woman's glory and it's part of her beauty. However, it also says that, that you know, it's a disgrace for man to have long hair. Uh, I'm not certain exactly what, it, what, what people meant when he says that even nature itself tells us that it is a, 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 a disgrace for a man to have long hair. Because we know that the Nazarites, they grew long hair. Uh, and um, and um, we we read where the the, the 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 son of man he had long hair as well, a, a pure as wool. So uh, we, I'm not certain about that, but um, but I I know for certain that it does say that the, when the women have long hair, it is a, a, a beauty and a glory. In First Peter three verse three to four, uh, it's also stated that your beauty should not be based on external manifestations such as you know, the, the different style of your hair and putting in gold or whatever other jewelry in the hair um, or the clothes that we wear. The, the idea here is not so much the, the, the style of the hair, but it, is, it has to do with the, 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 um, the vanity in which we put in, in into the into the styling of the hair, we make that more important than than who we really are and and what we do. So that's what this this text is all about. It's not so much that you know it's wrong for you to braid your hair and so on, but when you make it even more important than anything, and we become so vain about it, even the clothes that we put on, the jewelry that 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 that, that we put that we put on our, on ourselves, it says. That is not what we should we should be focusing on. It says, but it should be on the inward quality, such as a gentle 
and a quiet spirit. That is what God, God values most, not the outward appearance, but what the beauty that comes from within. Proverbs 20 and verse 29 says that the glory of a young man is their strength and the beauty of an old man is their gray hair. So, uh, uh, so Lenny, I, I am proud of my gray hair and I know you, you are too. So <laughs> while, while the young one may have strength, we got beauty, my son, we got beauty in our gray hair. <laughs> Um, and Proverbs 16 and verse 21 says, gray hair is a crown of glory. It is gain in a righteous life, you know? So we also recognize that, you know, gray hair and the loss of hair is, is a part of the natural process of sin and, and, and our existence here on this earth. So, you know, when, when it happens, we, we need to, like, like Judith mentioned, we need to embrace, embrace the confidence that, you know, my hair might have changed, my, my, my look may have changed, but I am still the same individual. And that is who God sees. God doesn't look at the outside. He sees the person within. The most famous account in the Bible about hair is that of Samson. And we can find that in Judges chapter 16. His strength um, you know, most people say that his strength was in his hair, but when it real when it comes down to the real um, meaning, his actual strength was in God, and it was symbolized through his obedience not to cut his hair because God that's the instruction that was given to him. So, um, an uncut relationship of trust and obedience to God, that was what the, the significance of that long hair. Notice the moment he cut that hair is also the moment when he disobeyed God and did not go by what God said. And as a result, he break the relationship. And so cutting off the hair is like breaking the relationship and breaking his obedience and trust in God. And that is when he lost his power. So it's not so much about the physical here itself, but it's about that relationship and that trust and obedience to the word of God. Second Samuel 14 and verse 25, Absalom was described as the most handsome man in the kingdom because he had this long hair. And that same long hair is the same thing that ended up uh, when he, he got... Uh, caught in the oak tree while he was riding his mule to escape from his father who he had uh, he was having uh, some conflict with he was left hanging in the tree by his hair and was eventually killed by Joab with three darts so i'm i'm not certain if 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 that that would uh, actually suffice to say that that the, um, um, the, the chapter 1 Corinthians 11, verse 14, that says that even nature said, tell us that this is a disgrace for man to have long hair. Maybe if he didn't have long hair, he wouldn't get caught in the tree. So I, I'm not certain, but um, that's only from my perspective. John 12 and verse 3 tells the story of Mary who used her hair to dry the feet of Jesus. Now, the emphasis was not on her hair, but even though the hair was her beauty, she was more than willing to give up whatever was so important to her to sit at the feet of Jesus. She was humble and willing to place her pride and her beauty at the feet of Jesus, which is the same thing that we all need to come to, not to focus so much on the, on the presentation of our hair, but more so to be willing to humble ourselves, to give up everything so that we can sit at the feet of Jesus where we can find salvation because only through Jesus we can be saved. Finally, the Bible um, tells us in Luke chapter 12 and verse 7 that even the very hair on our head is numbered by God. Um, I'm certain he knows which one I have left and which ones have already gone uh, from my hair and, um, and, and, and a lot of you. Um, you know, this is to show how intimately God loves and cares about us 
when he takes the time to even know the number of the hair on our head. You know, it, it, it says a lot about how much God cares for us and how much he loves us, how important we are to him. This is where our true value lies in the fact that God knows us personally. He knows us deeply. He cares for us and he values us. This is why he sent his only begotten son to die for you and me so that we may have eternal life. There is nothing in the Bible about good hair or bad hair. That's a cultural belief. Because when man was created, God declared his creation was very good. In fact, the psalmist David says, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And that includes over here, despite whatever texture it is, we are fearfully and wonderfully made and created in the image of God. Uh, sin has tarnished every aspect of humanity. As a result, our hair is not going to be a permanent thing. It is a temporary thing. And so we cannot, we cannot base who we are on a temporary thing. We have to base who we are on a permanent thing. And that is to know God and to accept him as our Lord and our Savior. He promises that he's, he's going to give us a, a, a more eternal body where the hair will be eternal hair. We will no longer be losing our hair. You know, so... We are told in 1 Corinthians 15, 52, and 53 that in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, God will change this mortal body, this temporal body, to an immortal body in which our true beauty will be restored to its original form. When Adam was created and Eve, they were God intended for them to be forever. But because of sin, they become temporal. But God tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, 52, that he's going to restore that. And he is going to give us a new body, an immortal body, one that will not decay, one that will not decline, that one that will not lose its hair, but one that will maintain whatever God gives us so that the true image of God will be forever in within us and then that includes our hair no more grain no more balding no more losing uh the thinning of hair no more wigs no more toupees no more weaves or extension we will have eternal hair your hair is not just something god put it there for a purpose and one day he's going to give us hair that will last forever May God bless you as you keep faithful to him. Thank you, Elder. Thank you. Um, I, let's do some announcements and then we'll uh, get the final closing prayer from Elder Walker. Um, I noticed here in the chat uh, that next week is church cleanup week. Saturday night from 8 to 10 p.m. and next Sunday during the day. And uh, they'll get uh, back to us as far as the hours. Um, any, 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Sunday, I'm sorry. 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Sunday, church cleanup day. Um, any other announcements? Any other announcements? Okay, Juneteenth program coming up next week. It's going to be a big event again. Every year we have some incre an incredible Juneteenth program. Uh, John Devine has always been in charge of it and been always amazed every year with the wonderful programs that he's been able to put together. Um, it's much more difficult now that we've had the, the, the COVID crisis, but I think he's going to still come through for us and I, you wouldn't want to miss it. So make sure you tune in next Sabbath. Um, get there early so you don't miss anything. It's June 19th. June 19th. Sorry, sorry wrong, wrong, wrong day. And Maxi family drive by next week at 5 p.m. So the Maxi family, we're saying goodbye to them.
They've served us well for many years and we, we hate to see them go, but we understand. And so um, we want to show our appreciation. We'll do a drive by at 5 p.m. And, and then that's next week. And then Juneteenth is the 19th. Okay, sorry about the mix up. Juneteenth on the 19th. Any more announcements? I don't see any coming forward. So, Elder, will you please close us out? Yes. Thank you. My Father in heaven, we are indeed grateful that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. When you created us, you created us with, within your image and you declare that everything was good. But the presence of sin has caused decline, death, and even lost. And Father, we know that this is only temporary because you have already instituted a, re, um, a redemption plan that will bring us back to the, our Edemic form where we will maintain all that you created us with. We will maintain those, including our hair forever. Help us not to have uh, our self-esteem and our uh, and our identity be hanging by our hair, but let it be the fact that we have Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And because we are saved by his grace, when he comes, we will receive a new body. It, it doesn't matter what state our hair might be in at this time, but we will receive a new body where there will be no more death, no more thin, thinning of hair, no more loss of hair, but everything will be perfect and eternal. Help us, Lord, to see that the value that you place on us is not an external value. It's that which is within. That's what is important to you. The heart is what is important. And if we know that we have Christ, we know that in this world, we don't have hope to have better hair, but in the world to come, we will have the perfect hair that God created. Help us to be faithful, to be true to you, for we ask all these mercies in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Um, I overlooked one, one announcement that we're, there's a survey that we should be getting. Uh, please fill out. It's a survey about the COVID uh, coming back, reopening survey. And uh, so please fill it out, send it in. And so we can make plans to, to open the church successfully um, in July. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful rest of the Sabbath. There's still a little bit left, but uh, uh, thank you for joining us. And I thank you for everybody who participated. My wife, Dr. Judith McCallum, um, Elder Paul Walker, and Mrs. Lois Trofford and her husband, Richard Trofford. Um, we thank you, everyone who participated, those who were behind the scenes, John and, and Josh and all, whoever was broadcasting things. Thank you all for your efforts. We really appreciate it and have a wonderful evening.